it's crazy. We're drilling these tiny, tiny small holes and we've got a two horsepower motor. We've got a machine that weighs 4,000 pounds, but it's precise. Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in the shop, home of bass, bikes, and big hair. Yes, it's a bit of a crazy world. Thanks for tuning in. I'm working on a bass guitar. And off eBay, I ordered some rasps. These are wood rasps. And I particularly like this one. This comes out of Japan. It's called a Shinto, about 50 bucks. And it looks like it's made out of hacksaw blades. And there's a, a coarse side and a medium side. And does this ever take off the wood? It's really nice. So I did that. Hi, I'm Paul Brody, and we are in not my shop. We're in Mitch's shop, because we're doing a little bit of woodworking. I have a, a base. It's not like we're steering away completely from metal, but I've worked in metal for over 50 years, and this is, this is a break. This is like a, a little bit of a, a breath of fresh air, and I'm into bass guitars right now, and we are making a bass. We're going to plane this today on Mitch's planer, so... Let's get going. Thanks for tuning in. I think that's a nice piece of wood. I can see all the all the shapes now. Very nice. Thank you very much, Mitch. So we'll we'll go off to my shop now. We've got a sander there and a router. We're gonna put a nice radius on there and then I'm gonna sculpt by hand. I don't have all my rasps yet. Ooh, that's a lot. There you go. Oh, look at that. Well, that's a pretty good fit when you hold up the guitar body like that. It needs a little bit of work there, but I can be happy with that. That's, uh, that's good for the first time. I think Mitch is showing you a few photographs, there's about three of them, where I went through kind of flat and then it became rounded a bit. If I got to take a straight edge, can you see how it, it's got a rock to it, right? And I made a tool. This is a straight edge. You can buy these from Stu Mac. They're 130 bucks, I think. And what it does is to measure the straightness of the neck. <clears throat> I went to my local metal mart and got a piece for 10 bucks and a little bit of time on the mill and I got my own straight edge. So that's, that's kind of cool. I also made, what's it called, a neck holder. So that when the guitar is on the bench, the neck fits in this and it's always at the right angle. And I had some advice from my friend Ed. He's, a, he's been a woodworker forever. Very good stuff. And um, this is a piece of maple and it had quite a few cracks in it. And they were kind of large cracks. So he says coffee grind. So that's what I did. 
You take coffee grinds, a little bit of white glue, mix it up. You take a palette knife and you squeeze it in there, let it dry, sand it off. And then there's a little bit of a, <clears throat> of a hollow. So that's when I use the CA glue. It's basically crazy glue. And this stuff is great. It comes in a big bottle and it, you can't feel the crack, but it looks like it's there. Pretty happy with it. After I did the sanding, I got a palm sander and I did the top and the back. It came out quite nice and smooth. And then I started using this stuff. Ed told me about this stuff as well. It's called Wipe on Poly. You just use a rag, dries pretty quick, and then you light sand. I use 320 and put another coat on. So this has about uh, five or six. This has, mm, I don't know, over a dozen. It's looking pretty shiny. That's what's going on. We're gonna make a, a nut today. And a nut is the piece that goes up in the top to hold the strings. And I wanna make one out of brass. Years ago, they used to make them out of ivory and then that was not cool. So then they made them out of bone. And now often they make them out of plastic. I've heard that a brass nut will allow the resonance. The sound goes on forever. Well, that's not true, but we're going to make a brass nut because it's kind of a tricky, it's kind of a tricky job because it's pretty small and the, they have to be spaced just so, and they also have to be at an angle. So I've got a sketch. What we're going to do now is to put the neck on. I've got, I've got some of the wipe on poly on here. You can see the difference in the color there goes a little darker. This has nine coats on it. And what I can show you here, I did a little bit of sanding at a sanding block and I went along the side. So I got a good fit and I want to show you. If this falls into place, that's not good because the resonance doesn't carry through from the neck into the body. So you need a good fit. That's a good fit. I have threaded holes in the neck, but because this is a new body, I have no holes here. Here's the screws that hold the neck or the body onto the neck. So I need to put holes into here. So what I did was I found some other screws. It's the same thread and sometimes you can get a thread that looks very close, but you gotta take a caliper and you gotta actually measure it. So these threads are the same and then I cut it off. I held it in a drill. I went to the grinder outside and I sharpened this to about a 45. What's gonna happen is these are all gonna get screwed into here and I've got a little got a little uh, a straight section there that's where the vice grips will hold it and turn it so I'm going to end up with four spikes which are, are protruding from the neck and then then I press it back on just like I did but it's not going to go down as far it'll go down to about there I think might even use the arbor press just to give it a little bit of pressure. And then I'm going to have those holes perfectly marked. That's what I think. In a YouTube video, I think if they were to do this, what they'd do is to fill these holes in. You drill it bigger, like three eighths or something like that. And you put in a hardwood peg, you glue it in, you file it off. And then you just re re-drill everything. But these are perfectly good threads. They've never really been used yet. So I want to do it this way. So this is my own way of coming up with it. I did not grab this off of YouTube somewhere. In a perfect world, I'd have a, a metal shop like I do and a wood shop. Wouldn't that be great? I have a friend, Ross. He has both. He's got the best of both worlds. 
If you want to comment on this, what a bad idea it is, what a good idea it is, you can do that. Me and bass guitars, we just get to know each other, so I'm sure there's a lot of, well, I know there's a lot of learning to go through. That looks pretty good. Got a piece of aluminum here, we'll see if there's any kind of flatness going on. Oops, there we go. Not flat. It's kind of a coarse thread, so it moves pretty quick. There we go. You can see those, those are quite, uh, quite pronounced. Oops. I watched a video and they were installing a neck and they used some sort of a thread wax. Well, I got chapstick, so this is my thread wax for today. We'll see how this works. This is Wax is wax, right? I got a two-tone, so a little darker. On the other side, I still got to do all the cavities for the pickups and stuff like that. So one step at a time after this, I think we're going to mount the bridge. I'll show you how that's done. Oh, so this is, uh, this is how this works, like that. I need the leather on there, but that's how that gets held. I just had Mitch helping me here. I'm holding this and he's adjusting the strings. So what we're doing is setting to a 34 inch scale length and I'll show you how that works, but why we have a string on the top and the bottom, these are both E string and G string, is to get the spacing right. Do you see how I can move this back and forth? And if I didn't check it this way, I wouldn't know where I am. I could guess, but it depends how the neck fits into the body. So. I'm holding this back and I'm going to make a mark. That looks, that looks even to me there. I'm going to make a mark right where the hole is. There we go. Okay, 34 inch. What I want to show you, I don't know if you can see that. Can, can you see that light pencil mark there? Anyway, that's where I, I, I drew previously for where, where the bridge goes. And it goes like that. And when you take a ruler and you go up to the nut like that, and then you come back here, can you see where the 34 is? It's right where the shortest bass string is. That's the G string. So 34 inches, the scale length. I never knew that a few months ago. This is all new. Okay, we're going to take this apart. Going to drill a hole. And we'll put one, one screw in. That's what we're going to do. One screw. That's what it's going to look like. And black knobs for on the pick guard they call it. I thought I would get aluminum and then I would do this. It's called engine turning. I wonder how that would look if that aluminum had all that on it. I was lying in bed this morning and it was five o'clock and I couldn't sleep because I'm thinking about the brass nut. 
and I'm thinking of a better way to do it. <clears throat> what I first thought I'd do is I'd hold this in the mill vise and the cutter would come in from the side and there's each string has its own width of slot. So you have to raise and, and lower the cutter to get the correct width of slot. And then I thought I would take a file and I would file the bottom because on the radius, you don't want to flat where the string goes. You want it to be the same radius as the string. So I, that's what I thought. And then at five o'clock in the morning, I'm thinking, no, that's not the best way to do it. What I need to do is to hold it in the vise lightly, hold it at an angle, maybe a, a 10 degree angle, because these are all these are all at an angle because you don't want the string hitting in the middle. You want the string to hit at the very edge here. That's why it's at an angle. And then I drill four different holes at an angle. So I've got the radius already. That's when I move it to the side and come in and match up the hole with the edge of the cutter, you know, to within a couple thou. So that's my new plan. There we go. I like Sharpies. So the hole's gonna be right about there. And the bottom of the hole is gonna match at the line. And then if the fret is too, if the, if the nut is too high, I can take, I can take brass off the bottom. That's how I control the height of the, slots in the in the nut. This is going to be the E string, the big one. This is the G string. And that's how it's going to go. So I'm going to measure. We've got 115 thou. This is how I'm doing it. So it goes over 115 thou and the slot is 048, 48 thou. So I take half of that, add it to that. That is the center of the hole. I'm gonna use the digital readout. This will not be marked out with a scriber and all that because it needs to be more accurate than that. So it's digital readout time. Okay, so let's see what happens here. This is supposed to end up in the middle of the hole. Oh, I know what it was. I didn't take into account the width of the cutter. Half the width of the cutter is 046, so 023. So I needed to add on 023. Ah, screwed up. Okay, anyway, we're going to finish this one off and see as we go if we can improve. Look at, look at this page of notes. It's getting crazy here. So, We're gonna do a little bit of filing now, see if we can salvage this so that you can look at something anyway. Not exactly happy with this, but my first nut. I can show you all my mistakes here. I'm just counting them. I came up with four things. For such a little piece, four things. That's where the center drill hit down and it was off center. Then after that, I put the slotting saw in the wrong position and 
it was off by 23 thou. You can see how the hole is there and that it comes up. It's like, a, it's like a little hockey stick down there. And the other thing I did wrong is I couldn't find the drill. I needed a 45 thou drill and I only had a 60 thou drill, 16th of an inch. So those are three things that went wrong. If you look at the back, well, no, that doesn't look good there, but these holes look good. These slots look good here. I am learning how to make a brass nut and my first attempt, not easy, but that's okay because I was under no, no real pressure and it's the start of the year with Mitch. We hope it's going to be a great year. Happy New Year to you. Thanks for watching. We like coffee. If you buy us coffee, it helps our channel. Please subscribe. Please like. See you next time. Hi, I'm Paul Brody. <clears throat> no, let me, let me try again.